I'd like to have Vernon Ricks, again, the founding member of Xerox Corporate View, to come up and uh, share a few words with us, if you would please. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the First Lady uh, uh, for and MCM, of course, I'm on the board here, so I'm proud of that, for hosting this program. It is a pleasure for me to share this platform with these distinguished panelists, uh, for I had the privilege of working with Professor Jackson on a panel at Georgetown University in February of this year on the 25th anniversary of the publication of the book, Black Georgetown Remembered, the story of a community that many don't realize was predominantly black, a black community until gentrification or deportation, as I call it, in the 1950s and beyond. I tried my hand in my teen and late years in show business and recorded and traveled with a doo-wop group performing at such venues as the Howard Theater uh, here in Washington, D.C. Until I decided that show business, as great as it was, was going to be the death of me <laughs> and decided to go into the U.S. Air Force where I received discipline and life skills that proved to be to the benefit of my life. I'm proud to have been born and raised in Georgetown, and I have remained a member of the oldest black church in Washington, D.C., established in 1816 and celebrating 200 years of service to God this year. I currently serve as chairman of the Board of Trustees at Mount Zion United Methodist Church. I'm a third generation Washingtonian, however, my family Ancestry is from Montgomery County in the Quince Orchard area, and one of my cousins uh, here today with me, Jason Green, and Donstown area. Some of my family is buried in the Pleasant View Cemetery historic site in Old Colored School on Route 28 east of Quince, Orch Quince Orchard Road. I mentioned my church affiliation in Georgetown because Josiah Henson, in his traveling back and forth from the Raleigh Plantation in Montgomery County to Georgetown, which was a port town, to transport and sell farm produce, I feel sure that he had the opportunity to meet or know some of the founders of the church, which was Methodist Episcopal Zion, which was Joseph Sia's call in the ministry. Some of the names of the folks in Georgetown at that time, one of them was Shadrach Nutrin, and as was mentioned earlier, Yaro Mamad. Both freed businessmen, just to name a few. I also had the opportunity to visit the Dawn Settlement in Dresden, Ontario, Canada, where Josiah settled after his family's escape to freedom, and I saw a picture of my church on a poster in their Heritage Museum. This indicated to me that those moving north may have had connections with Mount Zion. Church records indicate that there are those who went north or gone away. As I look at my life, it somewhat paralyzed Josiah's in that there are a lot of events that required some sense of courage. At the time of the Brown versus Board uh, Supreme Court decision in 1954, I was in high school and a part of the first class to integrate and graduate from the public schools in the District of Columbia. That is when I witnessed the meaning of separate and unequal and pledged to myself that I had to be better than my classmates who walked out in protest uh, to imagine the differences in the facilities in our black school versus those provided for white students. 
1965, I was one among the first to infiltrate corporate America after my military service, being accepted at Xerox after many denials of meaningful employment in my younger years. I retired some 18 years ago after 33-year career with Xerox, a 14, Fortune 500 company. Now today, most people don't have careers in corporations for that long. While there, I worked for the chairman of the board in the late 60s and early 70s, helping to write and implement their affirmative action program. Corporations during that time were required by the federal government to make changes in their hiring practices or risk losing their federal contract certification. Affirmative action was an escape to freedom for many blacks, like Josiah's journey from Ohio to freedom in Canada. Blacks were not readily a hired, and word was that you can't find any who are qualified for these professional positions. After we convinced the executives of the corporations that if they did not comply, it would have a negative in fact, uh, impact on their year-end salaries, they began to find folks who could exceed in the jobs all along. One of the great lessons I learned in my corporate experience was that I didn't get there on my own. That there were persons and organizations like the NAACP before me that sacrificed and struggled and labored in the vineyards to make a path for me and that my charge was to reach back and pull some others up with me. As I listened to the accomplishments of the panelists in the February uh, session, it did my heart well to hear and see presidents and vice presidents and other corporate officers of major companies express their responsibilities in corporate America, a far cry from when I helped to pave the way for those future successes. There has been much positive change just to think that here in Montgomery County, we have blacks in leadership where in my early years, I was called by and referred to the N-word here in this segregated, unfriendly Montgomery County sworn to uphold the laws of our country. I was also, my corporate, during my corporate experience while at Xerox, I ran for public office in Tacoma Park, Maryland. In 1972, being the first elected official in the history of the city and possibly Montgomery County. During that time, Tacoma Park was two-thirds Montgomery and one-third Prince George's. But the ward I represented was predominantly black in Montgomery. Like Josiah, I've never been afraid to apply my learned skills and to take a chance on the high road of life. Having served in leadership roles in my work and political career and on the boards of Maryland Municipal League, National League of Cities, executive committees of both the Maryland State and local branch of the NAACP and other commissions, I've sat at the table with local officials and national officials to discuss the concerns of my people and the communities. I am so happy to see the significant contributions that African Americans have played in the history of this county, of finally getting their just due. Like Josiah, many were sold and bought and forced south to work under harsh conditions on plantations. The cemetery of my church in Georgetown was a hiding place on the Underground Railroad for slaves escaping north. Some, I'm sure, through Sandy Springs, aided by the Friends Organization. Harriet Beecher Stowe devoted a chapter in her book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, to the Edmondson sisters, whose family were slaves on a, form in a farm in the Norbeck area where Leisure World sits today. 
In another book, Escape on the Pearl, the sisters were on a schooner that attempted to flee north and was caught north near the mouth of the Potomac River and the Chesapeake Bay. That's another story. There's so much to share about my life experiences and the history of this area that I could continue to talk forever. But like in show business, if you weren't, if you were on the stage too long, you got the hook. Thank you. <laughs>